Ahoj, posloucháte konopný podcast věnovaný pěstování a dalším zajímavostem ze světa konopí. Já se jmenuji Josef Krejčík a jako mistr Chozé publikuju knížky a články na tohle téma už od roku 2010. Přeju vám příjemný poslech. Pleasure to welcome you in Konopný podcast. Uh, how are you doing uh, now? Uh, really good, really good. It's a beautiful day in uh, toward the end of July here in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, the weather's been good. I can't can't complain. It's a little bit humid, but it's just it's it's really a, another beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, great. I really like Barcelona. I always looking forward to visit Spanavis and to spend a few days in there because it's the beginning of uh, spring. And in Czech Republic, usually at the time, it's uh, cold weather. So uh, <laughs> Spanavis is always something like like to taste a bit of summer or early spring. So I really like Barcelona. Yeah, uh, Jorge, you are a legend in cannabis branch, and I'm sure you are well known from Czech growers too, especially for your legendary indoor marijuana horticulture book. Can you oh, tell yeah. me brief? Can you tell me briefly your story? Where did you first got in touch with cannabis, and how did it happen that you became a book author? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, right at first, that goes way back to to like high school uh they call it secundaria here in spain mm -hmm. high school what happened is in the united states they had the war on drugs and it was huge it was really a big thing and so we really didn't know anything about any kind of drugs other than what we were told because i grew up in a small town ontario oregon So, uh, gosh, the whole world was telling us how horrible cannabis is, how, you know, marijuana, they called it, how horrible it is, and how if you smoke marijuana, you'll turn into like a crazy, a crazy <laughs> lunatic. And then three days later, you start uh, uh, putting heroin in your arm. <laughs> yes, and then yes. A week later, you go on a mass murdering spree. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we were taught. I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And so first thing you always, I always, you know, you want to do is try it, you know, try cannabis. <laughs> well, is that true or not? <laughs> And so you don't know. I mean, that, that it's the first thing people want to do. So that's what we did. And there was four of us. We went, we got one of my dad's pipes. Uh, mm -hmm and drove around in the car and smoked an ounce of Mexican dirt, dirt weed. We call, it, we call it Mexican dirt weed because the Mexicans are real smart. They only send the dirt weed up. And dirt weed is like, you know, it just smells and tastes like dirt. You know? <laughs> so they keep the nice weed for themselves? Oh, and yeah. The they're dirty really weed smart. To us. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I mean, a lot of smart Mexicans, and so anyway, yeah, we tried it, and and it was just wonderful, I thought, oh, these, you know, and then I thought, everybody was lying, you know, the, uh -huh. the authorities, my, my parents, the teachers, the, the cops, the politicians, And so I, I didn't really trust him after that because none of those terrible things happened to me. And it was a good experience. And so what about that was, and then some years later, like 10, almost 10 years later, eight years, seven years later, yeah. Uh, indoor growing got to be really big in the United States or mm -hmm. it just started And I was living in the Northwest in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so there was indoor growing going on there. And so that's when I wrote about it. I wrote mm -hmm. this here. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty nice. basic. <laughs> it's pretty is the first one? This one is the yeah, first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 1983. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, I can see. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's re <laughs> really basic, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But at the time, there were no books about uh, this topic. Uh, am I mm -hmm. right? 
Well, yeah, there was a couple, but uh, they weren't very good. Mm -hmm. uh, they they just weren't, and especially about indoor indoor growing. Yeah, yeah. And so so I got lucky in that way because well, it was the first book that was was uh, was honest and straightforward and simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's all I did was just tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. A lot but of people, at the, at the time it was honest, it, but, yeah. It it was not easy to be so honest uh, no. like at the time, you know. So oh, you, no. you you took a big risk to write about it. Yeah, where am I right? Yeah. Here, oh I got one here. Okay, yeah. Look, see, this is me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I remember uh, this book, this you know. Is, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I had to wear a disguise for years. Uh -huh. like, yeah, oh, yeah. I would have been, I would be in big, big trouble. Big mm -hmm. trouble. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I didn't have the disguise. And how did you sell? How did you sell bo uh, books at the time? Because you have to hide your face, you know? So it no. was also harder uh, to sell it in shops wasn't it or yeah it was really difficult uh, <laughs> it was really difficult because all we had we didn't have the internet back then we yeah, just yeah. had uh we just had uh bookstores head shops and indoor grow stores we didn't have either i shouldn't mm -hmm. have those of but I also did a bunch of straight books. I, I mean, most people, you can go to my website, marijuana, or no, let's see, mm -hmm. uh, Jorge, Jorge Cervantes.com, mm -hmm. and you yeah. can see all of the books I've written. Okay, mm -hmm. here's one. Yeah. For yeah. example, for example, we couldn't sell marijuana books at the hydroponic stores. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. illegal well uh, it, nobody would sell them because that meant you were going to make a criminal event mm -hmm, or a criminal, mm -hmm. uh enterprise they said yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyway so i wrote a straight book straight mm -hmm. book for the for that market and then a different a marijuana book like this one for the cannabis market yeah i understand i understand yeah but it clever. was it was really difficult because Oh, the it's like the fucking cops hated me. Uh, I was on like these watch lists and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and I have a big file like that. And mm. you know, it's just kind of like a pain. Yeah. But now, yeah. now it's nothing like it used to be. It's a lot better than before. Before it was really scary for a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but now it's knock on wood. It's not nearly as bad. It's it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I I uh, I have to say uh, to listeners that all the links mentioned in this podcast will be uh, uh, available on my website. Uh, there will be article connected to this uh, chapter of podcast, so you will find all information there. Also, uh, including links to Jorge's uh, site where you can really see all books he written and pu published and also with interesting uh, information on uh, on it and also uh, important uh, important milestones uh, what happened uh, in the US and with books in different countries for example how it was banned in Australia and other interesting uh, yeah. things uh, because yeah it's uh, uh we have to say jorge that uh, you are like a old school guy you were at the beginning of uh, uh marijuana uh, started or cannabis started to be popular you know and grown indoor you know so so for us uh, it's very interesting to talk to people like you and hear the stories uh, uh how it begins you know because you know, I'm uh, slightly above 40, you know, and for me, it's like uh, when I started to grow, it was, uh, for example, uh, in Holland, it was very developed uh, market at the time, you know, and wow. I remember beginnings of uh, this market in Czech Republic. So 
for yeah. for us and for younger people it's very important from my point of view to to uh, remember or to or to hear how how it uh, begin uh, may i ask you how many books yeah look yeah. here here's okay. my this is a dutch book okay it's okay the first first good cannabis book they had yeah uh -huh. it's yeah they love me I mean, okay. <laughs> I don't know if they love me or not, but at least uh -huh. I respect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but I got a lot of good Dutch friends. Yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is the, the first one. <laughs> it was still uh -huh. selling uh, Gilders. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was the price in Gildens? Uh, 300. Oh, no. Franks. Franco Florines. Yeah. 30, uh -huh. uh -huh. 3250. Gurdens was maybe. yeah Florinus and it was uh, 19, and it 1988 was, 1988 so it was cheaper edition came out yeah it was cheaper than grass <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> because I remember like a nice pack uh, packet was four twenty five <laughs> that's what I remember <laughs> okay there you go well look look this one. Uh, this one here, it has it's like in the seventh printing. Okay. Okay. It's eighth print, eight printing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. a bestseller. Everybody was really happy. It yeah. was a, for about five imagine. years, it was like the it, it was important book there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> I I see that it was published in 1988, what I see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a long time ago, huh? Exactly. I was 11 at that time, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, know. how many titles uh, in total are available now? Uh, if, and, and how... Well, I don't know if they're not, not everything's available because there's okay. newer, newer editions. But altogether, I've written about 50 books. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, or more than 50, actually. And, and mm -hmm. so and videos too i did videos with high time mm -hmm. but you can see pretty much all the videos on 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 youtube mm -hmm. uh, i have a youtube channel too mm -hmm. yeah. and uh and then where else mm -hmm. how many amazon amazon has all my yeah. and there yeah. i've got them in like seven languages eight languages maybe they're still in mm -hmm. I think it's eight uh, yeah. different languages, what I know. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's, you know, they're in the larger, but it's not, it, it's not in quite a few languages. Mm -hmm. Your, uh, your language, Czech, it's not in, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, German, German, French, Italian, the big, like the big five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm doing right now, actually, is I'm making a, a free, a free book okay and putting it online mm -hmm. and the free one and then i think i'm going to do a subscription one after that too all of that will go online but i'll be able to translate those real easily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where i can put the income uh you know the money because before see you have to get all the paper you have to buy the paper you have yeah to uh -huh goes to china and then back mm -hmm. uh, all of this stuff and then yeah you know like for europe hell you oh you have to have a warehouse and well we've got a warehouse here mm -hmm. but you know to ship it to the czech republic is like really difficult i know? i know or i'm shipping expensive. some books to spain so <laughs> I know. yeah, yeah oh, it's... exactly <laughs> it's not easy no, that's why it's a, and it's a big change to make it to mm. go from paper to digital. Mm -hmm. But mm. it's really the only way to do it. It lowers yeah, yeah. Your expenses everywhere, and you can pass that on too. But mm. it's just the whole everything's different. Yeah, everything. Life is changing. The world is changing. People are changing. You know, we cannot stop it. Of course. No. Uh, for for me like paper paper book like paper bag is is good when you can it's easy to search through you know it's oh, yeah. nice to have it in our hands but on the other hand uh, yeah online <laughs> or electronic book you you are 
you you have it in your phone, you know, so, so it's yeah, really it's, easy. Every, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, which way? I mean, this it has a whole library, or this is one exactly. Of, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's uh, it's it's that simple. Yeah, you know, yeah, it that's right. Were different. I I could complain, but it's this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Else, get used to it. That's it. That's, that, that's, that's right. And also paper is uh, becoming very expensive during the last uh, time or last year. Oh, it, yeah. uh, the prices rise uh, like uh, a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, it's also I'm solving this uh, issue that uh, printing is more and more expensive and you have yeah. to have uh, some warehouse as you said uh, luckily yeah. i have a big house so i have all all the place where i can keep my books for free you know but anyway it's mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a difficult uh, task Much that's right more difficult than i'd like yeah. to deal yeah. with let's get back to growing stuff you know i'm sure you have lots of requests from and questions from growers regarding troubleshooting can you tell me what what is the most common question and what is your answers or if no, you can say it easily? you know it's funny i used to get it's because i i used to answer questions for a lot of years and and now i don't answer as many i still see them but what i'm seeing overall is the questions are more sophisticated mm -hmm. well, a mm -hmm. lot more sophisticated but when it comes down to it there's a lot of well there you know i mean some questions are just bad but um uh, overall the questions are like i say more sophisticated but they have to do with really basic stuff usually still uh water is a big concern i mean it's mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. simple watering watering especially if you water with a lot of plants but overwatering is probably the biggest concern that there is. And once you overwater, you can't take it back. It takes you right. know, like a few days. That's um, right. And 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 I see I see this all the time where where people want to do something nice for their plants so they give it more water. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, your mother giving you more food. So, mm -hmm. you know, she feels better, but you don't, you yeah, know, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what happens. And then, so yeah, there's that. And then not actually testing, testing the water. I mean, testing the soil or substrate for, because mm -hmm. well, I mean, you, a water, water meter is really cheap. And the, the way water is measured, you know, the conductive, mm -hmm. uh, the conductive factor is, it's really, really simple and really inexpensive. So mm -hmm. that's why the meters are so cheap and they're pretty darn accurate. Mm -hmm. So, and they can measure right at a specific point in the soil. So that's mm -hmm. a really good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the biggest one. And then other stuff used to, be, I mean, I used to get them all the time because if you grow indoors, usually right at two months, usually people have problems because that's when they're not paying attention as much. It's kind of like the novelty wears off and they've over fertilized, they've over watered the plants mm -hmm. by them, mm -hmm. and the, the temperatures bounced up and down a few times. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that's when the insects and pests or, and, and diseases move in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's a big time to check. But mm -hmm. like I say, overall, it's water. And then another thing that can happen too, it depends on where you're at. But this was really big for a few years. It still is, is the hemp rus russet mite. Mm -hmm. uh, those, they call them like micro mites here, micro acaros here in Spain. But uh, those things were a real problem. And until they were diagnosed, nobody knew what they had. Mm -hmm. but, you know it's not really a big issue anymore because people know what it is yeah there used to be just a few products i don't know how the products are now mm -hmm. i remember like i was in america in oregon 
six years ago and hanging out with Paul Stanford, who grows mm -hmm. a lot there. And they, they didn't know what it was. And nobody seemed to know in the area either. We'd already had it here because we, we already, I already knew what it was from Spain, see, because mm -hmm. we bought it before them. Because mm -hmm. the Lacaros, they come from the, the grapes. They, okay. Uh, yeah, you'd think they come from hops, but they don't. They come from from grape, the grape field. Yeah. Okay. Can you please type down the uh, name of uh, uh, this uh, beetle or? Oh yeah, the micro. If you can see, if you can see down, there is a chat on uh, on the Zoom. If you type yeah, it in chat, or... I got it. I got to uh, just look it up. I don't because you know, it will be easier to find the Czech uh, translation well, for that, you know. Well, yeah, there's there's first there, well there's a him russet mite. Uh-huh. And then and then there's a cyclamen mite. And then that CYC that's not as common. And then where's all these mites? And then there's one other I forget always forget that one. Hemprosid mite. I see it. I see it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Hemprosid mite. I, I, I found it. I got photos of all this stuff. I just forget. Yeah. It. Yeah. I see. I see. So okay, we don't have cool. to look uh, look uh, uh, look for it. I I see it already. Oh yeah, the yeah. broad mite. Broad mite. That's the other one. The broad mm -hmm. mite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're all they're all in the same family. They act act very much the same, and there's a couple of products that work really well to kill them. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. But the big thing is to get to, to understand what they are and understand early, yeah. because it's easy to get confused with a, a nutrient deficiency yeah. or yeah. something else. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. damn little thing. They're so little. They're just really little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we we talk about it uh, before we started or on uh, by emails that you don't like uh, easy questions. I can agree with that because you know <laughs> if somebody asks you, uh, should I water or uh, uh, why are my plants getting yellow? And they send you pictures which are hardly to recognize what plant is uh, in there. You know, it's uh, really hard to answer these questions, and I have to say that. Like is the most common uh, questions. I'm. I also like the more sophisticated questions, and people already know so what they do, and they have opinions on something, and they easily yeah. want to know your opinion because uh, you know uh, there are many ways how to reach the same target, you know, and uh, and everybody has uh, his own habitats in some things, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's good to share or good to talk, good to discuss on some topics, you know, how you do it, how someone else is doing it, you know, and it doesn't mean that only your way is the only good way, you know, because somebody, uh, you know, you, you know that lots of growers has a very nice uh, wheat and very nice results, you know, and they, they, they uh, follow different ways how to, how to, get there you know so it's oh, yeah. interesting to know how somebody else is doing it you know so so it's good to good uh, to discuss yeah so so i have to say that the most common question for me is also uh, regarding watering and yellowing plants but most most often i think that uh, plants are yellow because there is too much water <laughs> yeah usually it is and and, and yeah. that's the base of a lot of problems that starts it could mm -hmm. it it it, it could uh, bring on diseases and pests yeah, uh, yeah. later on after the plant gets weed the leaves mm -hmm. can fall off mm -hmm. uh, the well there's the uh, plant just grows more slowly overall because there's mm -hmm. less uh, less oxygen or well less air in the soil you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um there's one problem after another and the nutrient yeah cake is not as good and yeah. and then and then if it gets cold and fungus gnats has a, has a great uh, place for living so they eat more roots you know so it yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it's really easy. There's a couple of ways to get over on it, you know, of course, to have a good growing medium that drains really well. Yeah. Now, that, that's the big thing with cocoa. Uh, the cocoa, cocoa uh, core and um, perlite, about mm -hmm. a 20, 20 to 30% mix of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that works really well. Because you know, how, I mean, there's no water. I mean, there's always air in there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's, it can be full of water, and mm -hmm. still have enough mm -hmm. air for good growth. Yeah, so yeah. that works really well, and you can really load that stuff up and push that really hard. Mm -hmm. Push, meaning, you can mm -hmm. put a heavy fertilizer load on it. But uh, regarding uh, uh, cocoa coir and perlite. Uh, we find out uh, in trials we made in Botanical Institute that uh, the microorganisms are not uh, that the co cocoa is not the best uh, uh, best soil for, uh, or best medium for microorganisms. You know that they no, not at all. <laughs> they they don't like it. Yeah. So I prefer I prefer to use uh, like a nice soil or fully hydroponic systems. You know, it's it's. The way I like the most, yeah. Yeah, so, like you say, there's so many ways to grow. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny that funny that. Yeah. yeah. As as a as a grower, I would to ask you if you prefer like uh, indica or sativa strains, or mm, simple. You can ask if you like fast flowering short plants or higher plants. With longer yeah. flowering period and a little bit different uh, uh, result, you know. It kind of depends. It kind of depends. Um, I'm not able to grow now, darn it, because I'm traveling so much. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. After COVID, I'm started traveling again. But um, yeah, I mean, if I've got enough, a good climate and enough time, I would grow the biggest, biggest, baddest. Uh, sativas that I could find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, I love them. They're 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 great. And there's nothing like growing big plants. Big plants are just cool. I yeah, like yeah. Them, <laughs> they are. Uh, here where I'm at, we it gets really hot where I'm at. But uh, whatever the climate, whatever you can grow, I would grow that because mm -hmm. they're fun. Um, yeah. And the auto flowering plants, they're pretty interesting. I'm learning a bit more about those, but I'm, I, I really do re rely on other people so much because, well, like I said, this, uh, next week I'll, I'll go to United States and mm -hmm. I'll stay there for two months and I'll be predominantly, well, I'll be like on the West coast, you know, mm -hmm. West coast U.S. And then after that, later, a few months later, I'll go to Thailand because mm -hmm. uh, Thailand, well, I've got good friends over there, Spanish mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, well, from several countries, actually. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they legalize cannabis. That, that, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so I think maybe I'll do a, a book in, in Thai. Mm -hmm. that would be cool, cool. Enough. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, there's a lot of people that live there, you know, when you look at the geography, it's like the best, uh, very well located for Asia. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? yeah. Like the yeah. Right. The yeah. I remember when I was in Thailand, uh, it's a long time ago, and I, I've been there only once for, for, uh, for a holiday. And I remember uh, that weed was only with branches, like... Uh, uh, packed in packed in newspapers, you know. So right, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Time to time, there, there there were seeds inside. You know, it was not like a high quality, but it was it was tasty. <laughs> but you know, it was uh, completely illegal. You know, so you can uh, get in real troubles when you uh, oh, yeah yeah are busted by cops. And you know, cops in Asia they don't uh, they have a 
wooden stakes, you know, to be <laughs> Yeah, I know they, and they hurt. <laughs> they hit you with those things. This is something you really don't want to happen to, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you have a language problem, they yeah. do not have a problem. They have <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this and will teach you. <laughs> they have stick, oh, you don't no. have any stick, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I have no they have a stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks man it's like no 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 no, <laughs> no I, I i know that guy with the stick he's not very nice <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's right like, you know when we talk when we talk about um, uh, uh, asia about thailand you know i have to start uh, i have to i have to ask you for uh for sin samiras because i think uh, you remember when it uh, appears in uh uh, in growers community uh, because I was I was not alive at the time I think <laughs> I, I remember when feminization process was stabilized and when it, it was popularized by Dutch passion yeah and but uh, how it worked how, how it was in with this in Samias I think when you started to grow there 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 were all, already uh, plants without uh, seeds no, or yeah. Nobody really understood a lot of that stuff back then. Uh -huh. They really uh -huh. didn't even even marijuana botany. They weren't sure how to distinguish a male and female plant. Okay. Uh, it was yeah, and then there was a book called Sin Semilla, and mm -hmm. it seemed to be magic but somebody figured out to remove the male plant yeah 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 it's uh, easy to yeah yeah it's in the end <laughs> well yeah but see here's the problem in in it, it's like in mexico and well a lot of countries are really macho macho you know like uh chauvinist and stuff yeah, yeah so, so getting them to remove the male plants is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a male plant, guys. You gotta have the male. Everybody knows. Yeah. I'm serious. That's the main reason, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So nobody wanted to do that. And then they started doing it. But I remember it first coming out of Mexico because uh, in the early 70s, in the early yeah, early, early to mid 70s, mm -hmm. mid 70s better. They mm -hmm. could have been in a few small places, but this is just what I remember personally. Uh, mm -hmm. I, but boy, it just because we always had seeded cannabis, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this, uh, the Sin Semilla, it was, uh, oh, it, you'd never see it outside of Mexico. Because mm -hmm. I went to university there in the 70s, mm -hmm. and we would get it pretty off, or sometimes, not always. And it was always the, the best, the best that seems mm -hmm. to me. Uh, and mm -hmm. back then, everybody looked at it like seems to me uh, was like a variety's name. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> That's what it was good dope and bad dope. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but it came but when you look at it the feminized seeds i think the first time that that happened with cannabis was also in the 70s mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. 70s and i think it was some indian guy in india mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because it, it, it's not that you know feminized seeds that's different but that's just basically a seedless plant, see, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's been really big since the 1950s, or yeah, because that's when they came up with like seedless watermelon and yeah, yeah, yeah. seedless cucumbers. Mm -hmm. They did the melon. And then other seedless stuff. Yeah, there are several uh, several uh, vegetable and uh, fruit you can get without seeds, of course. Yeah. Or with seeds, which are not uh, uh, sprouting, you know, it's also... Exactly, exactly. So it's really common agricultural processes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and it's just started with cannabis because all of the studying... 
Uh, you look at how much corn has been studied or wheat mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or bananas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. I mean, just a heck of a lot of, they've all been studied or soy, soybean, soa, and, and, and cannabis is, should be studied that much because it's, it's, it's also could be agricultural crop for mm. more, uh, animal feed like mm. alfalfa, mm. alfalfa. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's lower water consumption, way lower. Mm. Mm. And it's got all kinds of really good qualities, but the laws are not in place to be able to use it as an animal feed. Mm -hmm. And it just, it needs to build the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of other uses as well. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, you mentioned already auto flowering strains. What, what do you think about it? Uh, do you like it or? Yeah, I, I really like it for outdoors. I I really love it because it's like uh, great for for place where I I live. Like uh, that, you always reach an. Uh, uh, you don't have to wait when autumn will come you know it's finished uh, quite soon and you can you can have enough sun and uh, good temperature for them when you grow them well, for yeah. indoors for indoors i prefer uh, photos but uh, i understand that it's very easy to grow you know so what is your opinion well the big thing is it's how how expensive they are to grow because See, with the autoflower plant, you can give it like 20 hours of light and it, and it flowers, no problem. Mm -hmm. So it turns out if you want to buy a light and give it 20 hours of light, it's you, you don't need to give it as bright a light as you would if you had like only 12 hours. Mm -hmm. of light. So the light is less expensive and many times the uh electric rate is less expensive mm -hmm. one, one light can either light more plants or it just costs less so in that way it's really a good deal because you can buy a cheaper light and you can use less electricity mm -hmm. over, or, or well lower level of electricity over over time it's not overall less electricity yeah Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so that way it's really pretty cool because I didn't understand what the heck anybody would want to grow indoors uh, autoflower, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's really a good reason because, mm -hmm. you know, it just doesn't take as much light because mm -hmm. we know exactly how much light it takes to, to grow cannabis indoors mm -hmm. in several couple of different scales. Um, let's see. Oh. What is it? Millimoles per per watts uh, per square mm -hmm. per square meter per second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but is, what happens is you can. Uh, uh, so we know that figure. You know the 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 amount of intense light, but it's how this amount of light you get during twenty four hours. That's the mm -hmm. daylight light. integral. You know? And the integral. Yeah, that's really. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, uh you know it's a fixed number so it it <clears throat> say you want to fill this up well it still takes the same 75 centiliters to fill this mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. but you can do it either really fast or really slow it doesn't matter as long mm -hmm. as it fills up in 24 hours yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the deal with the light so you can just uh -huh. fill it up really slowly with the uh -huh. in 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 20 hours it's a very interesting point of view, you know. Yeah. I honestly, I never think about it this way, you know. But uh, because from my point of view, it was always a little bit more expensive to grow uh, out of flowering strains. If you simply calculate uh, the electricity consumption, and if you take in consider that uh, uh, some people are not using a strong uh, light as they should, even for photos, yeah. you know. So so. Uh, Easily, if I say that uh, if somebody is using, let's uh, let's talk about uh, classic uh, uh, HPS lamps. So if somebody mm -hmm. is using 400 uh, watts per square meter, uh, you know, you you think that if you if you grow uh, out of flowering, you can use 
like uh, lower wattage like uh, i don't think so if you use 400 watts for per square meters in my point of view it's uh I prefer six hundreds, you know, like uh, <laughs> you have a lot yeah. of lights. And um, actually, I grow mo mostly with LEDs now, you know. So it's, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you, uh, but you are right that if we calculate the daylight integral and compare it with micromoles, yeah. uh, and we calculate that we we use twenty, uh, we we uh, have a twenty hours. Day, uh, long day that we don't need so strong uh, strong uh, light yeah um, I yeah. will look at it and recalculate it but you are right maybe 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 it will be at least the even the same consumption and easier yeah. e easier yeah. growing you know so but yeah. yeah it's interesting it's interesting idea I really didn't uh, think about it uh, before it's very well, interesting. Yeah. You don't think about it, but it's just, it's just one of the variables, and mm -hmm. you don't have mm -hmm. too many variables, so all you have to do is just change one of them, mm -hmm. and it affects the others, the others. But mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like a pretty straightforward, and and you know, I mean, <laughs> this thing, I mean, we're just learning about the the spectrum and the photons. These yeah. were words that weren't in our vocabulary a few years ago. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, well, that's I mean, right. It's right. In the vocabulary, but not, we didn't discuss them in, in cannabis usually. That's right. That's right. You are right. You know, uh, from for, uh, for me, it's uh, very interesting time to time that uh, something what is, what is normal in uh, uh, normal horticulture is like sometimes it became to cannabis uh, community and it's like uh, something very, very new, <laughs> new invention, but they use it for cucumbers or tomatoes like uh, 40 <laughs> years already, you know? That's right. right. <laughs> that's, that's true. Huh? Yeah, that's, it's it's well, uh, the, funny. The greenhouses but... that darken out the, the sky, those, mm -hmm. you know, they were using those, but it was usually well usually for like almost always they would use the the, the blanket to put over the top mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just to hold the heat in at night yeah yeah but, but then you can also use it to black out the sky too yeah yeah yep. yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff uh what else like covering seeds covering seeds with a fungicide or color coating them you know mm -hmm. that's been mm -hmm. around forever and that was a big marketing ploy for a while mm -hmm. uh, cool, God, yeah. cool interesting yeah, you see it always but it's gonna always come out just like the regular agricultural world yeah yeah, yeah. I use uh, it for it's it's interesting. I, I I would like to suggest um, listeners who are really interesting to cannabis growing to and who is visiting uh, regular cannabis uh, fairs to visit sometimes some regular horticulture fair because uh, if once you visit it you will see that there is lots of stuff which are not using for cannabis growing yet you know and yeah. they are very useful you know so so. Uh, if you have a chance to visit uh, some fairs uh, focused on horticulture, do that, especially for greenhouses, something in Holland, uh, you know, so it's like, a, it's like a really, really good experience for everybody to, to go there. I think you can, you can confirm. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because we had, before it used to be NTV, but now it's called Green Tech. Green mm -hmm. tech. and it's all over the world too. It was and it was at the Rai this year in in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But we have that's it's the biggest agricultural fair in the world. They say mm -hmm. mainly greenhouses for mainly about greenhouse. But uh, uh, we even have for now three years uh, our own place for cannabis there. Mm -hmm. and before yeah that was my favorite fair of all times because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you want to know anything about you know agriculture you go there and they're they're like ahead yeah. of everybody it's know? taking place in june or uh, may yeah, or it was just yeah last month last month yeah yeah june uh, june june mm -hmm. yeah uh what's it called green tech 
Green tech, yeah, yeah, in Amsterdam, uh, and in Holland. Yeah, and it's also in Paris. It's in several other world capital cities. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so listeners can find it, and the link uh, to everything we are talking about uh, will be available on my website, uh, and you will you will find easily an article connected to this chapter of podcast. So so it will be easy to find for everyone. Uh, Jorge, I have to ask one thing. This is uh, not easy to answer, but uh, I would like to know who is the most imp inspiring per person you met in cannabis business or with somebody. If, can you say a few names or? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, over time and because things change, you know, you get influenced over time uh and and not always really famous people you know mainly it's a lot of small growers and mm -hmm. people that you never hear about it's great yeah. to say you know i know somebody famous but who gives a fuck you know i mean <laughs> it's who inspires you you know uh, uh. and it's like the guys that are growing you know mm. that that don't have another way out uh to to have any cannabis or or there's somebody that's they're growing for a patient um mm. and, uh, yeah i mean to me I, I got really fortunate in as much as I was in the right place at the right time and <laughs> continued to do the same thing. I, you know, for a lot of years, I think it was kind of, I don't know why in the hell I do the same thing when just a lot of years things didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's all kinds of people that I've helped and I was able to inspire. Mm -hmm. And, it's those guys that really, well, they, they really make the difference to me, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's nice to say, oh, I'm, you know, like big and smart, but it's like, you know, I mean, we're all in this together. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, so you got to help everybody mm -hmm. or everybody got to help everybody. And, Because there's, you know, well, here in this, I don't know, for some reason, it seems like there's yeah. a lot of ego, yeah. really big egos. But okay. so that 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 never really worked for me. So that's that's who's probably been the most inspiring are the people that, you know, that I've helped. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. I was, I expected that you will say some famous names, you know, because I know right. you're... Uh, know a lot of people but I, i i very appreciate your answer because yeah that's right in the end like uh, famous people are uh, famous and lots of people are know them but they are <laughs> yeah, so heroes what? which are hidden yeah and nobody knows them and they do something what is much more important for someone oh, yeah. else you know because if you help one person it's better than if you make lots of money and don't help anything you know oh yeah Yeah, so, happy. Yeah. But uh, honestly, I, 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 what I like on our society, like connect to cannabis, is that uh, yeah, sometimes there are competitors, of course, because it's business like uh, any other businesses. But uh, yeah, I, I, anyway, I feel it as a as a some kind of family, you know, when you uh visiting all the trade shows and meet uh, all the people again and again it's like uh, it's always nice to uh, feel that you are part of something because uh, for most of people you are a drug dealer you are like a junkie you know and you work in something what is uh, right. what ruining uh, life of young uh, people and ruining families right. you know so it's always <laughs> it's nice to fault. <laughs> yeah exactly you, you, you do what you do the best and you you trust what they are doing you know uh, you know yeah. like none of us are uh, like someone who want to give drugs to children you know oh no. you no know, it's a it's a bad thing uh, if we talk about uh, tobacco alcohol cannabis whatever 
it's not for children but oh. when you are adult uh, and you are a normal guy you know so it's up to you what are you decide to do you know so it's like oh, yeah like i mean it's so weird because what was the, the the government the government you know if 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 i owe tax money or well yeah there's money owed i owe it to the government and it's it's me that owes it you know they yeah, didn't yeah. make the tax mistake i made yeah. it according to them always <laughs> but if they find drugs in my house they're always mine they don't yeah. belong yeah. to somebody else well, why is it backwards i don't understand yeah that's well, how it is yeah. but the good thing is we're growing more cannabis and it's happening worldwide. Yeah, and, that's right. And, that's, and right. that's really a good thing. Yeah, um, I think it goes the right way now. So yeah. hopefully it will it will continue this way. Uh, when I ask you for uh, for inspiring uh, people you met, I, I have to ask you one thing. What is the most important thing cannabis brought to your life? Because you you are in this field like forty years, right, or something like like it. You know? Yeah. Um. Boy, let's see. I think. Let me. I got. I, I thought about this stuff. Because. Uh, okay. Memorable. Oh. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's. I. I gotta look at this for a moment. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I got most memorable moment. That was most memorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I talked about my hometown, mm -hmm. and how people were saying that cannabis was bad, and they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were talking about either because they were stupid or because they did know better and they didn't, they just were lying. You know, mm -hmm. so the way it was, what the hell's going on here? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, didn't really believe those guys. And I learned, I learned how to look into stuff myself. Mm -hmm. I just go along with everybody else. And mm -hmm. so that's what I did. I decided to to grow cannabis and but to teach everybody to grow because mm -hmm. it seemed like my need my my skills were necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good, good, good. Uh, and what is the most memorable moment of your rich career? Is there something? Yeah, the you... memorable one. That one's that one's a one. I you know like you probably wouldn't think you'd think something else, but. For me, for me, do I even have this? No, it doesn't have the sticker. But when I published this book, the encyclopedia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I've had, see, I've been fighting with uh, the established book world for many years. Mm -hmm. because I've been fortunate to be real successful. And it kind of pisses a lot of those guys off because I've been more successful than them. Well, people buy my stuff that's why i'm successful so maybe they should you know think about that why why people buy my stuff and not theirs and mm -hmm. anyway so what's happened with the regular the straight books and everything they told me that um that i'm a criminal and all this stuff and then i keep so i keep uh entering contests you know like mm -hmm. book contests Okay. In the, world, in the straight book world. So finally, for this book here, I won. Okay. I won a the Benjamin Franklin Award, like uh, first place award. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and Ooh. it was thing because it's the first time a cannabis book has ever won an award in the book business. Okay, cool. We've been them all the time in in the cannabis world, but that's just us pat, patting each other on the back. And, you know, what I want to do is be big everywhere, you know, uh -huh. in the real uh -huh. world, be, be accepted. And that, so that, yeah, getting that yeah. award, that was a big deal. Okay. Uh, yeah, I came all the way to America to get it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It's, it was in which year? Which year you won it? Do you remember? God, I don't know. That was or... about like six, seven years ago. Uh, six years 215, ago. 216, something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. 2016. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great that to that you see that you have been accepted by uh, like a regular world, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a big thing because yeah. I have a that's been right. Before. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have been uh, back to US to pick up uh, to to get uh, an award. It's it's great, <laughs> and I have to ask you because it's for mostly for Czech listeners. Have you ever been to Czech Republic as well? No, I haven't. Uh, and I know there's a great fair over there at Praga. And yeah. uh, it's one of the places I got to go. I just haven't been there is all. Uh, uh -huh. We live here, you know, and it's just, it's like a two hour, less than two hours on the airplane. Yeah, it's more it's more than two hours, but uh, anyway, it's, is. Uh, there is there is a direct flight from Barcelona to Prague. It's very easy to get uh, get there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's an easy city to get around in, to, to mm -hmm. walk around in, and there's yeah. a huge cannabis movement there too. I know you definitely have to come, and you are more than welcome here. You know, once you decide uh, to go there, just let me know, and I will surely help you organize program in there. So, oh yeah, that'd be great. So it will be great. It will be also great to meet you in person again, and uh, yeah, yeah. maybe we can we can have a chat again and and make some content for Czech growers as well. Sure. So it will sure. be very helpful. Yeah, Canafest is really really nice, uh, nice uh, event in in Czech. So it's in uh, it's in November. I know people from Barcelona yeah. who used to go there. They always say. Oh, it's cold here <laughs> because sometimes it can start to start snow at uh, November in Czech. It's normal, so you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there could be oh, right, temperature well. close to zero already, so it's uh, good to have a jacket with you. So yeah, think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> or you me. can you can come uh, in the summer or uh, or late uh, late Maybe spring summer, if you if you want to. It gets yeah. hot here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be good to come in the summer. It's better. It's it's better weather here in yeah, the summer yeah, uh, it's because it's not forty yeah. degrees are not very common in in Czech uh, so far. Yeah, but yeah. you you never know. Uh, weather is changing. So if you will postpone your visit, maybe you come here and it will be forty five already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty warm in a lot of yeah. places in yeah. Europe. Wow. Last time we last last time we met in uh, Barcelona, you told me that yeah. uh, you are preparing some Czech edition uh, of book. You already mentioned it, uh, so it will be ebook. It, it will be for yeah, free. Yeah. Am I right? It'll be well. I'm not doing translation yet. Okay. It'll be this ebook. Yeah, it's it's uh, about 150 pages. Okay. And it's really easy to translate, or it costs a lot less to translate now. Mm -hmm. Uh because see, that's that's my only expense. That's mm -hmm. the thing with the with the ebook, because you mm -hmm. know, there's no paper, there's no warehouse, there's mm -hmm. uh, and you can set you can sell it like straight out of your office, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can that's also right. put it on Amazon, but you can mm. put you see you can do that too in your local market you've got a mm -hmm. good uh, you because you know everybody you could you could do that for advertising for example mm -hmm. sell advertising on your digital book mm -hmm. you know because amazon won't let you do that yeah mm -hmm. yeah but that's uh that's the deal because it, it's it's well I don't have very much money. I don't have to make very much back after translating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand how it works. Yeah, because yeah. translating also... the 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 actual translating is just a small amount yeah. of the expense. You know, in the end, if you calculate all the expenses, is uh, it's not so much. Yeah, it's always uh, important to have a proper translation, of course. 
uh, because uh, I remember when I published the uh, first time my indoor book in German, the translation was not the best one. And mm -hmm. uh, I heard it from, from people. So the second edition was already uh, uh, was translated again. And I'm always uh, take a big care about translation quality before I publish something something again so okay we will we uh, so uh, we can wait we can wait uh, uh, check ebook in upcoming year maybe or uh, everything yeah, will yeah. Be... I don't know what the translation because it's it's not really hard to manage all of this I just got to have the the income to do it make sure that it goes to the right you know that, that it works yeah yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, we can talk about it afterwards. Also, I can help you maybe with this stuff because I know good translation company focused on cannabis uh, oh. content in Czech. Really? So, okay. that's so, good to know. So, yeah, so it turns out I, I've got another meeting now. I'm just figuring okay. Out. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I, I already asked everything I wanted to ask. Of course, we can uh, talk uh, together about growing like for uh, another hour and uh, we will still have uh, enough topics, but your uh, schedule is tight and uh, I'm very happy that you were open to do this interview with me and to talk to Czech growers and listeners to Konopi podcast. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it is not the last time we are in touch uh, and yeah. and I hope we will find another time to continue in our speech and if you come to check really as I said you are always welcome yeah. just let me know and uh, we will organize something uh, yeah I will yeah no, that sounds like fun maybe in the we, like the summertime next summer yeah we can do we can do also some online me online uh online event for for well, my easy. listeners and growers yeah. so that they can ask you something i'll translate it and we can yeah yeah sure we can sure. have a chat it will be interesting okay sure. jorge Okay. Thank you one more okay. time that you attend Konopni podcast and I wish you a nice day. Oh, <clears> and thanks. that's a beautiful day here. Thank you. Yeah. I wish the same <laughs> for you. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you very much. Have a okay. nice day. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye Talk bye. Bye bye. Ciao.